it was the, I think, the lack of connection, the feeling like I didn't matter. I don't know how I got the thought that it was something I could do. No idea. But it started early. I mean, the depression started when I was 10. I don't know about the suicide. I don't know when that became an acceptable idea. I'd start self-harming like nine. I was different than a lot of my peers. And then I was a pretty overweight kid, like went to school with a bunch of skinny, beautiful girls. I just thought I had to be like that. So that developed into a downhill spiral. I was born and raised in the Bronx, Bronx, New York, uh, Creston Avenue, 188th. You know, I'm a son, I'm a black man, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a girl dad, proudly. I'm, a, I, I'm an artist, I'm a storyteller. I'm a, I'm a lover, I'm a partner, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm an asshole sometimes, depending. Uh, when my dad passed away, I was 17. We've been coming to the beach like ever since we were little. And um, my dad would kind of teach me how to surf a little bit here and there. And it was just something that we did to bond together. He was always someone I like to have really deep talks with because he just got it. He was a big feeler and I felt really understood with him. I remember my mom read one of my essays and that essay was, literally the title of the essay is, Instead of Killing Myself, I Called the Suicide Hotline. So it was very clear for my mother what, what the essay was about and she didn't know. And that was her first thought, like why, didn't, like, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you talk to me? She started crying and it was like, Mom, this is, and it's something that I think is important for folks to understand, and, and not just about suicide and mental health, but in general, like a majority of our issues are not about the other people that are involved, it's about us but it's more about the person who's holding on to whatever anger, fear, frustration, grief. Make sure I know that I, I have to be better. Like, there's no way out, absolutely no way out. Like, it's like this or death. And it's like, it sucks that people think like that. And it sucks that like there's 700,000 people that probably have the same mental mindset that I used to have, you know what I mean? That I still sometimes deal with, but it's like a lot easier to wake up in the morning sad and know like, Millie, like three years ago, you did not recognize yourself at all. Talking about depression or anxiety, like, all, like puts you in a, makes you feel like you're in a corner, makes you feel like people think of you as unstable or unhealthy or something when majority of people are struggling with something just through trauma or childhood experiences or whatever. Everyone's got something and I just choose to talk about it because I know other people go through the same things and I'm not necessarily embarrassed about what's happened in my life and um, I can't control what's happened and um, so I just try to like make the best of it and let people know that they're not alone with what they're going through. So now I am a primary therapist. No one should have to do this without knowing someone cares because it was so hard for me and because I was so certain and no one cared. I didn't like that. So someone should help. Someone should care. 